everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to potentially ruin a very expensive model but have some fun along the way let's get into it uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Games Workshop was recently nice enough to send me this big bad boy, Usheron. Uh, the Mortark of Delusion, that's what he is. He's the head of the Flesh Eater Courts. The Summer King. Uh, super cool guy. And I love Usheron. I always thought this was such a cool character. And in fact, one of my more favorite pieces of art uh, in sort of Warhammer is of the Summer King of Usheron show that to you on the screen right now. And uh, he's huge and rearing back and ripping somebody in half and there's blood spray. And then the actual model came out and he's all hunched over and and his entire back is fur and when you're moving around the table it looks like you're moving around a, a Tribble or a Furby or something. So I just wasn't into it. Despite that, I really love the, the base of the model. It's so good and I love Ushran as a character. So I thought Hey, let's challenge ourselves. Let's chop this guy apart, completely remake him from the ground up, uh, cut up, re-slice, re-sculpt every part of him, and uh, see what we can do. So today, I'm going to take you along on that journey while, uh, I don't know, we try to see what we can actually do. So uh, let's head over to the desk and let's start potentially ruining a model. The first thing I had to do was actually figure out how this guy goes together and what the pieces were. That sounds rather stupid, but it's important. When you're going to be doing a massive conversion project, it's important to understand how the thing is eventually going to go together, what pieces you have to work with, what's going to need to be cut, what order they're supposed to be assembled, and so on. So I looked at the instructions, looked at the sprues, kind of got a mental model of how this guy is supposed to go together, and then started plotting out in my head how I was going to change it. The next step after that was to start basically from the ground up. And so I had to begin with his legs. His legs are really, really crouched because he's so down low. So that is to say his legs are really bent. So the first thing to do was to basically cut them and then re-extend them back together. Now, because all of that extra space isn't modeled, um, because the when you know if two if the two sides of the leg push together, there's effectively nothing in the middle there. That meant there's going to be these giant open gaps in between. But that's okay. We can cover that later. When we're initially doing conversions, you just want to get the pieces stuck back together. So oftentimes you'll see me working sometimes with sprue goo and sometimes just with good old fashioned uh, super glue, just CA glue. And the reason for that is because I might need a piece that has barely any connection left after I've cut it apart uh, to hold for long enough for then me to get green stuff in there. And so as I'm taking the legs and I'm cutting them open and then, oh, you know, standing them up tall, uh, I also want to be constantly working them against each other to make sure they're in the right position to where, like, uh, he's going to be standing not completely whopper jawed. Uh, so that's, you also want to make sure that his feet will end up flat, uh, on the ground. So you're, it's constant little adjustments. Don't worry about having big, giant, open spaces when you start doing conversions. If you have to cut away big parts of the model, that's okay. We can bring it back in later. It's fine. Now, after the legs were there, the key was to start building into the torso. And this presents a bigger challenge. The torso section is... Again, because he's all crouched, I'm missing huge sections of the torso. I knew I didn't want to use the giant fur cape because it just wouldn't fit. So that's gone. So he has no back. He also is missing most of his abs. But fortunately, he does still have to have hips and those connect to the legs. So we can tape kind of the hip joints, reposition the legs, re sit the torso down on top of it, and start getting the basic humanoid shape of the model. Now, even though that's going to leave a huge amount of open space, again, that's all right. We're just trying to get the shape there. We can constantly fill in as we move along. Uh, but we want to make sure we're getting everything in rough position and getting the upper torso and the shoulders in place will allow me to then move to the arms and the head. We can worry about what we're going to do for a back and all of that later on. That's for future Vince to worry about in this project. For now, it's just a matter of getting him in position. As I moved through the arms and or the upper shoulders and then into the arms, yet again I had to significantly change things. His arms are not in a position that I wanted them in. I want him back and rearing and as though he's about to swing his mace. 
Uh, so once again, I had to, the arms were mostly put together. I didn't have to like actually cut them apart too much. Uh, again, they're fairly folded, so one of the arms had to be chopped, and then that left a big open or an open space, but not a giant one, not like the legs. And the other arm was kind of more or less how I wanted it. It was just in the wrong horizontal position. And as I move it around, these models are very much meant to be fit exactly where they're sitting. So that is again going to leave a gap. In these kind of events where you've got this sort of thing happening, you want to make sure that you. Uh, again, attach the thing with super glue and you deal with the open spaces later. So the first part is effectively we're building a little maquette. That's the best way I can describe it. We're just getting the rough skeletal outline of the pieces we can use, cutting away anything that doesn't fit, and we'll re-sculpt the rest later. Now, there we're going to use lots of different tools to do that, as you'll see. But the important part was just to start cutting stuff away and getting it into position. And in fact, I had to re-sort of move the arms a couple of times as I would place it and then not be happy with it and replace it again. All right, so now that we have that in place, the other next problem to deal with was the hand on the arm swinging the mace. As it sits on the model, he's like holding it up, like almost like the queen would hold her scepter, like the queen of England. Uh, which I just didn't like at all. It's such a passive stance. It's like it's the stance of an old lady, not a giant delusional monster, right? I understand he's a king and he thinks he's blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I wanted him to look terrifying. And so uh, the next goal was to figure out, okay, well, like his hand is very gripped around that mace. What am I going to do? And this is actually one of my favorite conversions that I did. I actually, his hand was confined to the sort of grippy part of the mace. So what I did was cut away both sides of the mace and then simply flip them. So now instead of his, him holding it towards himself, he was holding it away from himself. And then it was just a matter of repositioning the hand on the actual model. So again, I had to slightly reposition the hand, cut, trim a few things, but I got it into position to where now he's fully in the backswing of the thing. And as we go through this video and you see footage, you'll notice it several times pieces will move, like a leg will be in a certain position and then it will be in a different position in a future clip. And that is because as I'm moving this, it many times became necessary to then further break something off of what I did, which is another reason why like super glue or a minor attachment in these early stages can be good because that becomes easier to snap. And then I can reposition it, cut more away, shave more away, sand more away, whatever I need to do uh, to get uh, it back you know, into the new position that it now clearly needs to be in as we build out more of the model and we see sort of his whole form and how he's gonna uh, how he's gonna actually sit. All right, the next step is tricky. So he's got all this open space on his torso. We got to deal with that. And so we're not gonna. I, I'm gonna use green stuff for this. You could use green stuff. You can use milliput. You can use air drying clay. There's lots of things you could use. I'm just gonna use green stuff. It's what I have and what I'm fairly comfortable with. And when it comes to reshaping the torso, we don't want to fill that entire empty cavity with uh, green stuff. That would be insane and expensive uh, and completely wasteful. So instead, we're going to use an old trick, uh, much like paper mache. Uh, we're going to fill the torso up with foil. Um, so I take just some standard uh, like foil, you know, like cooking foil, like what you use to wrap up cookies. And I crush it up into little balls and I just shove it in the torso until it's roughly in a torso shape. And the cool thing about foil is you can keep compressing it and shoving it down and flattening it and stuff like that. Once that's in place, then all I need is a thin layer of initial green stuff over everything over the front gap on the torso and on the back. Now, with this first application, I am not worried at all about muscle structure. That's not relevant here. We're not trying to make back muscles. We're not trying to make abs. We're not trying to get the shape of the back. We're just putting down a solid surface for us to work on. That's the most important thing. So as we're dealing with it, we will build the muscles out later in the next step. But for now, we just need to get that space flat and nice to work with. So I put it on there, cut some away, smooth it down. Uh, it doesn't need to be hyper smooth because we're going to lay you know, green stuff over the entire thing. So if you've got some fingerprints in there, stuff like that, who cares? Um, but what we can do when we're all done is kind of sand it. If any of the foil sticks through or anything like that, you can just sand it down to get a nice, smooth, flat surface once the green stuff is dry. With that green stuff dry, now we go to the next uh, step. 
And the next step is to start building out the muscles. And the way I like to do this is not trying to like put on a big piece of green stuff and then I don't know, like shape all of the muscles. Maybe that's how some people work. I can't get my brain to work like that and I never find I get the right balance. So instead, the way I find it easier to work is to roll out little snakes of green stuff. You just take it and flatten it out on your, on your cutting mat. Then you cut it into pieces and either flatten it or roughly make it into the shape of the muscle structure. So making a couple abs uh, or something like that, just like an ab shape. Um, we know what an ab shape is. It's like kind of this rough, squarish shape, sort of. A, uh, and same thing with the back. And if you ever want it, like back muscles are not hard. I used an anatomical reference here. Just you look up like muscles, literal muscles, or you look at other models. Uh, our friends like Larry the Ogre, ogres have very defined muscle structures and back muscles. You can always just reference other figures you've got that are shirtless, I guess, any sort of barbarian model. Um, but we're going to place the green stuff directly on the model where that muscle is meant to be. And then we're going to get out our silicone shaping tools and we're going to smooth it down, push it down, work it roughly into space and integrate it with the, f the previous layer of green stuff. Basically start smoothing out the edges, flattening it down, stuff like that. So every time I'm working these muscle structures, I'm using uh, multiples of the clay shaper tools, these silicone tools, uh, to, to flatten out and to get the muscles roughly into the shape I want. Uh, by the way, if you don't have a set of these tools, there's a link down below where you can find them with an Amazon affiliate link. You can pick those as well as the other tools you'll see me using here with the green stuff up. Next up, we, as we've got them kind of worked with the clay shaper tools, we need to go to smoothing them down and actually getting them flat. We got to get rid of bumps and, and fingerprints and stuff like that. And your silicone tools just won't really be enough for that. Um, they're not going to get it ever hyper smooth. That's when we've got to go to metal uh, dental tools effectively. Um, so these are used uh, for a variety of purposes, but for our purposes, they're, they're, they're going to be how we s completely smooth and shape all of our green stuff into position. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is just take the big flats or the other parts of the tool that are appropriate here and we're going to basically run it over those surfaces and really get everything nice and flat and where we want it. After we've gotten the rough shapes hewed out with the silicone tools, now we can use the metal tools to get it nice and hyper smooth so it looks integrated with the rest of the model. If you're ever trying to create individualistic uh, sort of flows in the the muscles that you can also do that here with these tools at the end once the green stuff has hardened some so if you need to create some muscle connections or like some tautness in the muscles or torn skin or anything like that you can do that by working as the green stuff has slightly started to cure but it's still relatively soft our next step is now that he's coming together we want to find some other bits to adorn him with i didn't want him just being like having a big open back one because you know my back's okay but it's not great. I'm not the best sculptor in the world, to be honest. I'm, you know, I'm, that is definitely true. I am not good at it, is really what I'm trying to say. But if I can do, that's why I'm sure if I can do this, you can do this. Uh, so I wanted to find some cool things to use. So we dive into our bits box and I found this extra big cloak from the Keeper of Secrets. Cutting that in half and then sort of repositioning it gave me a great cover for the back, but also looked very regal. At the same time, I was able to find bits like some jeweler's chain, and I'm able to take that jeweler's chain and connect the cloak uh, to the actual armor plates, as well as connect the, uh, put that uh, sort of around his neck so it looks like it's actually hanging on him in some way, and it's not just fastened into his skin. So jeweler's chain and stuff like that's really ch relatively cheap to buy in mass. You can get it from any local craft store from Amazon or anything like that. Uh, and, you know, your bits box can be a great trove, even when you're dealing with a big model like this. Uh, you know, I found like skeletons to attach to his hip that I imagine he thinks is, uh, you know, some trophy he got from war, some great riches or something. But in fact, it's just literally a human skeleton that he's carrying around. And so we can use these additional bits to hide some of our sins from earlier layers. If you had muscles that don't quite look correct or parts of your model that didn't quite come together that, you know, there was a gap or something like that and you just couldn't quite get it properly filled, no problem. Grab some extra shields or armor plates, you know, especially on big models like this, especially on delusional crazy models like this, you can have them festooned with, you know, other old discarded gear that in their mind is clearly part of their armor, but in reality is just ramshackle things that they have accumulated. So there's just infinite possibilities for you to hide your sins from your previous layers. 
Now came the sort of final steps, which is like adjusting the head, getting the hair on him, doing some final green stuff, touch-ups. You can always keep working on top of what you did. You don't ever have to be completely satisfied with one layer of green stuff. This project took quite a while. This was probably a week of work because of all the drying time in between. I wanted to let things set and cure and then work over top of it. And I think that's one of the things that people often get wrong. When they're working with the, uh, you know, with green stuff, they have to like, they use one big blob and it's got to be go from a blob to a perfectly sculpted arm. And it's like, well, that's not going to happen in one blob. You know, so you, as I, as I did this, I kept adjusting pieces. For example, on his right arm, he has this big cutaway in his bicep where I think basically the mace is supposed to sit. Uh, but I didn't have that anymore because I had repositioned it. So I realized quite late into the project that I had to put a new bicep there and made sure it fit with the armor plate and so on. Multiple times I would sand or cut away or have to shave things down to make them all fit with, uh, you know, how the model was now repositioned. That's fine. You're going to constantly need to be working back and forth, uh, potentially like shaving things off, uh, reapplying some green stuff, doing another, once that cures, doing another layer over top, and that's all perfectly fine. So once we had him all together, then it was just a matter of some final finishing touches. Uh, this was little details and elements to, you know, to clean up where I had messed stuff up, so like reshaping his knees and things like that uh, to make sure it was good. I did end up breaking off his leg one final time and repositioning it just to make sure it looked right after what you see here. And uh, yeah, all in all, I think he came out pretty cool. In fact, why don't we take a look at what he looks like painted? So here he is, all painted up. Uh, I used the little executioner guy on his base because he took up so much of the base normally, and then now he's kind of, when he's actually up and standing, uh, he takes up so much less of it. So I wanted some more visual interest on the base. So I thought the executioner guy could be a nice little, uh, you know, his servant that's on the base. I think this dude came out pretty cool and pretty fun. And it's cool to have like the only Catacros, Catacros, good night, the only uh, Usheron in the world that looks like this. There's something really fun about, you know, significantly altering your models. It's super scary. I'm not going to lie. Like several times throughout this, I was like, well, well, I'm probably just ruined that. But we got to a relatively cool place. Is it perfect? No. I wish he was gripping the mace a little tighter, but I couldn't really figure out how to do that. I should have cut his... Uh, the thumb on his left hand off and brought it because he's in sort of like a, a pose where his thumb is very tucked in because of how he normally has that arm. I should have snipped that off and brought it up so he was in more of like a this kind of a stance. His hand looks a little weird. You know, his one of his hips is a little too wide. Like, there are issues, but it's still cool. Like, in the end, I'm not taking this guy to competition. He's there to be a cool model to use on my table. And it's fun that I have the only version like this in the world. So I encourage you to try some crazy things with your models. Uh, it's It can be scary. And, you know, you could mess up and be in a place where it's not easy to get it back to where it was. But I say no risk, no reward. Uh, it's fun to make things that are yours and just yours. If you liked this, give it a like. If you've got any questions about how I did this, uh, that I didn't cover in this video uh, or explain, drop those down in the comments. I always answer every question and comment asked. Uh, I very much appreciate you watching this. You know, subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. As I mentioned, all the tools you saw me using are linked down below in the description. You can pick those up. doesn't cost you anything extra, but gives a nice kickback to the channel. Uh, of course, also, uh, there's our merch store down there, and there's our Patreon. If you want to take your next step on your hobby journey, maybe you're trying a big crazy project of your own and you want some help to guide you. Hey, we'd love to have you as part of the community focused on review and feedback and all of us helping take our next steps together in this awesome hobby. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one and we'll see you next time.